Let's begin now. Hello and welcome to the Ticket Stub, your favorite place for movie news and reviews. We broadcast live every Thursday at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 from beautiful Conroe, Texas. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, the Ticket Stub Podcast at the underscore Ticket Stub. The Ticket Stub is sponsored by Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. Be sure to visit IRLoneStar.com for information about the show, sponsorships, or drop us a line at 936-647-3776. And please don't forget to leave us a five-star review. My name is Connor, one of the hosts of the show, joined in studio as always by my friend Chris Appel. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Another week, another dollar. Yeah. Anything exciting going on in your life, Chris? Uh, personally, no. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, and Dick Schistler, how you doing, man? Yeah. What's the word? Mm. Word up, bro. Mm, movies never taste mm. so good. Mm, 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 yeah. That's right. Where's that popcorn at, Chris? Yeah, you're supposed to bring us popcorn. Oh, that was our new thing. Hey, during our red carpet special, I personally purchased you some popcorn. That is true. That yeah, is true. and then I personally purchased Connor some soda. some soda. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it my turn? And then now... Oh, uh, oh okay, yeah. Oops. Oops. My bad. All right. Well, we're glad you're tuning into the show. Uh, for everyone listening, we are here every Thursday, like we said. We got a great show coming up today. Uh, we're going to do uh, some movie news here in a little bit. We're going to be rewinding some of the movies that we've seen over the last week. And we're going to be playing a little game called General Admission, where we talk about the movies that we are embarrassed to admit that we like. Uh, right, Dick? Yeah, that's right. There you so, go. Yeah, so we're all going to have... We're all gonna, <laughs> Is that uh, what we're doing? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. We're revealing some movies that we uh, are, are embarrassed to say that we like, either because... They're bad and we like them or because there's just some element of the movie that is embarrassing. And I guess we're going to try to defend maybe why we like it, even though it is uh, maybe patently bad. We do want to let you all know um, that we have a red carpet special out on YouTube and podcasts and everything like that. It was for Chasen Parker's movie, American Fish Trap. Uh, the three of us, uh, Chris, Dick and myself, were there. We got to interview Chasen. We got to interview uh, one of the actors. Uh, a coach who uh, has been in, it was also an NBA or a college football, or a college basketball player. Mm -hmm. oh, what, was, what was his name again? Uh, Reed Getty. Reed Getty is part of the U of H uh, Phi Slamma Jamma. And the actor, Lance A. Williams, I'm going to make a prediction right now. I'm going to say he wins an Oscar. Wow. At some point. Okay. Bold prediction. It is a bold I, I think so. Is he going to be the next James Bond as well? No, okay, but no, he's going to win an uh, Oscar. Okay. I think he's going to get falsely accused. That's what? my prediction. Oh my god. That's my prediction. Oh no. He, oh, he's not. just so good looking and so good. You know, someone's gonna be like, this is gonna be a money grab. Someone's gonna want a piece of that money, huh? Yeah. Well, if you want to watch that red carpet special, I'm kidding, uh, by it, the way. Yeah, exactly. It's on uh it's on YouTube. And Chasen's gonna come back in studio on September twenty seventh. We're gonna have a chance to to deconstruct the movie a little bit, maybe, give him some thoughts, uh, get to hear about the experience from his perspective. He'll also be joining for our group rewind of the month, and we're gonna be watching Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Uh, starring Chris Pine. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So the reason we're doing that yes, is please, please explain. <laughs> uh, Jack Ryan came out on Amazon Prime, and the, the new TV show. The new the TV new, show. Are you Are you watching it yet? I or? watched it. Is, is it good? Uh, good? I enjoyed it. I'm interested. I enjoyed it. Uh, but what's funny is I like the character Jack Ryan, and there's been so many editions uh, of a Jack Ryan with a new kind of like James Bond kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think I don't remember this one at all. If I saw it, if I did, I remember Chris Pine. But I don't remember him being Jack Ryan, so it might have been another Chris Pine movie that he was in. So who do you think is the best Jack Ryan? Well, that's that comes down to the people who are really big fans of the book. So the real Jack Ryan is supposed to be an, a nerd analyst, not a— Like I Harrison know, Ford. Yes. So, like, well, the, the way I explain it to some folks is he's the guy that always accidentally comes out of a violent situation on top. And it's not like goofy, like, oh, I tripped, so it knocked over a shelf, and the shelf dropped a bowling ball on the guy's head. It's not like that. But, I mean, he had military background, and he was in a war, depending on which one, like what version. So the, he does have some some uh, experience in conflict, but it's not like every day he does, you know, yoga and beats up a punching bag kind of thing. Because, you know, some movies, like, you know, they, they're just so good at killing people. Is there a lot of yoga? Yeah. Are, think... you, are you just referring to Die Hard? Is that the only thing you're drawing from here where he's, like, <laughs> meditating? No. Is that is not in Die Hard? In that, in, or is it Die Hard 2? It's not Jack Ryan in Die Hard. No, I'm just saying. He, he's, but, like, he's, uh, like, he's, like, meditating, watching the TV about how his brother got killed. That was Jack. That was Die Hard number two, I guess. Oh. But he's the, the one thing that's consistent is he's a Boy Scout. So he always— Oh, like, so he's always prepared. Yes, and Does he, he do the little three finger salute? All no, the time? it's more of like he he gets that he gets that reputation of being a Boy Scout because you know when it comes down to the government, there's always that like oh let's have some leeway on this like don't report that. But he's a Boy and Scout. he's like no we need to report that. The Boy Scouts are nerds most of the time. We're either so, no yeah. Boy Scouts. 
and that's why Chris Pine. It's no, funny that he's no. gonna be he's gonna be uh, a I believe horrible it's just Jack Ryan scout so. now. I think it's just scouts. Boy, Ben Affleck was Jack Ryan as yeah. well. So, yeah, yeah. Ben so, Affleck was. So, I actually uh, liked him in Ben's, Some of All Fears. It's a great movie. Ben yeah. Affleck. We had we have J, J, John Jakarczyk. Yeah, the guy from the office, John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Yeah, and then we had Alec Baldwin, and then oh, uh, yeah. we, we and now we have Chris Pine and Karen Knightley's in that movie. Kevin Costner's in that movie, so I imagine it's going to be enjoyable for all. I think you can rent it for like two bucks on Amazon Prime. Oh, wait, to pay Amazon. for it? Yeah, sorry guys, I can make. Some, I can do first the reason. popcorn hey, and now this. But you you also could go to Second and Charles. And try to check that out. That's where I might have to go try to find Princess Mononucleosis or whatever. I <laughs> Mononucleosis. Coming to theaters yeah. in 2019, folks. That, that place is like a hoarder's paradise. How do you Charles. even... Why, Princess Mononuke? What? It's Mono, the movie you're making them watch. Mononucleosis. Princess Mononuku. Yeah, whatever. All right, we're going to move on to movie news now uh, <laughs> before everyone tunes, off, uh, tunes out. Uh, we've got a couple stories we want to talk about. The first one is from CNET.com, and it says that Apple just signed a deal for two two movies. Uh, one of them is an animated film. One of them is a documentary. Uh, so they're targeting kind of a, 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 a kid's audience, and then I'm guessing documentary is probably more for an adult audience. Uh, and so the question for me is, uh, Apple getting into the content game, you know, thoughts. Are, are they the kind of company that should be involved in this or should they kind of stick to what they're doing? I don't think you can ever have too many companies involved in making movies. I think it's a good thing. Um, I would like to see them release it in theaters. Uh, not the documentary. Just, they can keep the documentary, but the, the animated Instead of just movie, on their platform? Yeah, instead of just on their platform. I mean, but you think they probably won't though, right? I, yeah, I don't know. They said it was undecided. So, you know, we'll see. All right, Dick, do you think there's any company that shouldn't be making movies? Well, they're not making this movie. They bought them. Okay, yeah. So that's that's big difference. That's true. Um, that's true. I mean, I think what it comes down to it shows you how how anyone can get in the game, and if you have how, how to, several it, billion dollars, it just depends. Anybody. Well, it just depends on what Apple's intentions are. Because you think this is kind of like a test thing where they have a streaming service, or do you think this is more of like, hey, we like to have our eggs in different baskets, or is it something similar to? We want to have a good message for all of our films, and we're going to see if we can have that kind of backing. We want to be the Disney's of the world, but a different version of that, kind of like that. How Disney fires directors because of you know that kind of thing. I have to imagine that they are trying to. Find I don't really a, know. They're trying to find a way to centralize themselves in this whole thing with with movies. You know, I mean, they already are that the that iTunes Store where you rent and things like that is prolific, but I'm sure that they only get a small piece of that, and so I'm sure they're trying to get these subscription services. The genius is. Except, you know, it, most of them, it's just, it's un, when they get their membership to a certain level, like Netflix, you know, they have, uh, what, like 30 or 50 million yeah. people paying for Netflix. Uh, $10, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, well, they got cash on hand, man. They it's got unbelievable it. the amount of money you're generating at that point. And when you get that many people together, you can do well, so much. Well, it's like, do you think Google should be making movies? Sure. Yeah, I'm sure that or they Facebook? will. I'm sure that they, I'm sure that they will. Yeah. I think Facebook, I heard that they're trying to buy like a TV, uh, I mean, a, a, a sports rights like to broadcast sport like football yeah. what if what if to watch football you they have to log do that, on to, though they already do that yeah but they don't have like the they don't have the rights to nfl though they have rights to like uefa soccer league yeah but who cares about that dude uh, this is america the, the united the, the, oh, yeah. oh the world yeah i'm a man of the world <laughs> dude, we freaking well, we've already, Texas. no we've already talked about how movies now like crazy rich asians is a great example and the meg is probably the best example recently is that movie was produced and made in China, and actually it was one of the rare movies that was simultaneously released in the China film market and the United States film market. Usually, USA yeah. gets it six months later, China gets it. So, I mean, I think the markets are kind of shifting in, and Apple, this might be connected to that, saying, all right, we, there is some money being made, and it also helps us support a brand on the world market, like, like the two movies they purchased. It'll be interesting to see, and it, it'll be interesting to see. Like, all these companies that have nothing to do with, with film— you know, but now they're all they're getting involved, and I think so far. Well, I mean, actually, Apple had a big uh, impact in the movie industry because they were one of the first people to introduce the codec for movie trailers. Oh yeah. If you notice, uh, for a while, I don't know if you've been watching movie trailers, but iTunes was like the go place for high quality movie trailers because yeah. they were the ones that inter introduced. I think it was, uh, I forgot what codec it was, but that was like eight. That was like eight to fifteen years ago. Like that was the place to watch the best. Version well, of Apple, the yeah, like Apple Trailers was like an app I had and a website yeah. that I would go to a lot. But it, you know, I, I will say that these other companies that are bringing on the content, uh, it, they've made really good stuff so far, in my opinion. When you look at 
Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. I mean, these these original stuff, the original stuff they're doing is it's been really good. But I also smelled that a lot of people don't know, especially Netflix movies. They're Netflix didn't make those movies. They bought well, them. Yeah, you're right, you're right. The TV series are a little different. They're producing, but them. they're producing and doing things like that. But a lot of the like. Like Amazon and all those, like I think the first Amazon actual movie was Manchester by the Sea. It was so they actually said, "Hey, we bought the script, we bought this." It's Amazon Studios. But on the other hand, these are movies that maybe would have never been distributed if it wasn't. So I mean, while they didn't, maybe they're not in charge of the content. We wouldn't have probably seen it if it weren't for them. There's not enough theater space to have all these movies be releasing like they are right oh, now. Oh, sure there is. <laughs> there we go. Let's open <laughs> some more up. All right, next thing, Pitchfork.com had an article oh. about. Yeah, oh. exactly. Never heard of that. Me neither. Uh, had an article about uh, Chance the Rapper. Do y'all know Chance the Rapper? Yeah. Do you know what he does for a living? He, 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 he raps. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope that he raps. He, he does rap. Uh, <laughs> he's got. He, he's going to be in a new movie called Slice. It's out, actually. Yeah, it's out. Sorry, he is in a new movie, I guess. And it stars him as a pizza delivery boy and werewolf. Yeah. Uh, never, to be, uh, never to be confused that he is both of those things. Uh, so you can get this on iTunes, speaking of, or Google Play, other platforms. Uh, I just thought it was kind of funny, you know? That uh, I don't know if you know anything about Chance the Rapper. I mean, I listen to some of his music. I have zero idea. Yeah, well, he raps and uh, very popular. I would say. Um, I have not seen this. I don't know much about this. I, I didn't see it. Find a trailer for it in my very brief searching. I, I did watch a trailer. Okay, for so it. I mean, does it look totally stupid? Is this actually like trying to take itself seriously? Well, you gotta know who you're talking to here. I mean, I, you gotta take what I say with a grain of salt. Always, I, always. It very much interested me. I think it was. It was just dumb enough to capture my attention to well the alarming thing i would say about this movie is produced by a very good i would say like relatively good new good a24 studios i love a24 and they've produced high quality films uh with a lot of depth a lot of you know creativity and things like this and it's alarming that they would do video on demand because they primarily reserve their stuff for theaters yeah. so to me this tells me that this movie sucks and they didn't want to spend they didn't want to damage their reputation on the theater market and uh yeah well he was pretty good when he hosted saturday night live yeah so well, let's base it all on that <laughs> well i'll tell you a24 is one of the like i look forward to their movies as much as anything else what else did they, have you. they done oh goodness now you're gonna call me out I'm gonna, let me let me look it up real quick because they've done a ton of things that i have liked um but if you ask me like what is that uh they did um let's see Lady Bird was a24 which i really liked um film. hereditary was a24 They've got that one mid '90s coming out that I'm excited. I think is that Jonah Hill maybe, Jonah Hill. Uh, which I want to see that one. Uh, they did the Eighth Grade, which I talked about a couple weeks ago. Moonlight. They did Moonlight. Oh uh, wow, yeah. Yeah, I mean they've done a lot of a lot of the it big comes, ones. It comes at night. Yeah. So, anyways, so they've got a bunch, and I think they've really kind of come onto the scene with making some of the really critically acclaimed movies over the last little bit. Um, Swiss Army Man, remember that movie? I, I talked about it where they had a uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, Daniel yeah. Radcliffe. They made that one as well. Um, Anyways, a lot of cool movies. Uh, very interesting studio. But yeah, I wonder if that does mean something, that this wasn't brought to the theaters. Or maybe it was never meant to. Who knows? Uh, the third thing, E.T. Online. <laughs> the, the truest source of news, E.T. Online. Yeah. <laughs> our, our conspiracy theory is they know one of the actors or directors did something really wrong. Oh, like they're trying to bury it? And then it's like, well, because if you release, sometimes movies aren't released for a couple of years. And they're like, hey, we can't change it. They're coming out in the next year, so let's release it right now. <laughs> There, we're done. Oh, maybe so. Who knows? Uh, Olivia Munn, ET Online. Olivia Munn gets candid about the Predator movie scandal. Okay, do y'all know anything about this? I yeah. I, I I saw way too many different sources about what's going on here, and so I did not know how to comprehend what really happened. If that makes sense, because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of both sides coming out about this. Well, the best I understand it, and Chris, you can jump in here and clear it up if you know more than me. She was there was a uh, an actor and I don't even remember the name of the guy. Uh, he was in some scenes and she there was some allegations that came out. Stephen Wilder Strigel. Well, I believe he was a registered sex offender already. Okay, I think is okay. what that was. Yeah, and so some allegations came forward about that, and then she campaigned to say that they want she wanted to cut those scenes from the final product, and uh, they ended up doing it, I believe. Yeah. But she talked about how she felt isolated when she was when she brought this forward. And uh, she got his scenes cut out. Anyways, I don't know what he did. I mean, you know, I know that to be a sex offender is obviously not a good thing. I know that there, that, that wor word can maybe cover. It was an underage girl. Okay. Okay. Well, that's probably not good. Allegedly so, I mean, but I think this ties into the whole greater conversation that Hollywood's having, which is like 
the people who have done these things, does that mean that their career from then on out is over forever? I mean, if this was a period of time ago, you know, say it was 20 years ago that this happened, does that mean that in the present day you're not allowed to be an actor now? Well, it's up, well, it's up to the, you know, whoever's directing and making the movie. I mean, most companies now, just speaking of companies in general, not just movie studios, are at will. And, I mean, you can pretty much choose to, you know, end anybody's employment that you want to for any reason or for no reason. Uh, and with the, I guess, when you're applying for jobs, there's a question on most applications that says, have you ever been convicted of a felony? And you yeah. can't legally ask what that felony is. But, you know, you, the people have to put yes if it is. They don't have to elaborate on it, elaborate on it but generally people do. So you, you can kind of make, you know, a little bit of judgment at that point. But Well, I just, uh, so I guess maybe even to the larger point, people who complain about some, I, I mean, you know, and, and maybe she was very rightful in this whole thing, I don't know, but I do see this happening a lot more where someone speaks out. And, you know, Olivia Munn, she's obviously going to carry some weight when she says something like that to a director or to a studio or to whatever. And, and the people kind of ending other people's opportunities for work because of things that had. Well, I, I, th I think in this particular scenario, uh, what people are afraid of, I imagine, as a studio, is you're going to give too much power to the actors themselves. Because at the end of the day, they're being paid to do a role. And do we really need their politics or their input about who they hire and fire? And I know now that's the new thing in contracts where I get to approve who's going to be my opposite and kind of thing like that and it, it's funny to me that that she felt the need or somebody like told them oh do you by the way this guy that you were on set with was a registered sex offender and it, what probably came out was this happened i don't know how long i don't know the de but was, regardless of the details of it it's like do you really want to shut down production because of something that already has happened like they've already shot it it's already done I mean, like, really, are you going to be that big of a, a non-player kind of thing? Because I bet that was the kind of language. Like, you're not being a ball, you're not being a team player here, Olivia. And I think, honestly, this is going to sound controversial. I think she said this because she wanted the publicity of being a supporter of the meet, and that kind of like similar to the Me Too movement. Because I would understand if it it didn't come out yet, but this is like right the week before the movie's released. Yeah. And like, she's doing all the, she's on Ellen, she's doing all the stuff. I'm like. This is this is either too coordinated or she's doing this for personal gain. That's why people don't like her because like they know the intent of her is not to be really like supportive of, you know, we really need to control the sets. It's more of like, I just didn't feel comfortable and if I would have known, I would not even set foot in that same area of a, a registered sex offender. And like, unfortunately, this guy can't even defend himself on the level of Olivia. She, does does he get to go on the Ellen DeGeneres show and say, you know what, I was peeing in the bathroom? You know, that's and... that's the one thing that I'm I'm curious about because the Tonight Show canceled uh, Norm Macdonald's appearance uh, this week because he said some stuff about the Me Too thing. Dude, I, love, it, I love Norm. And how Norm, was, Norm is my right, but he's uh, my number one. And how he was glad that the Me Too was winding down because he, he thought it was I, I don't remember the exact quote, but they canceled his appearance. Now, whatever happened, because this always used to happen. Whenever a celebrity would make like a faux pas, they were able to go on those talk shows and either explain themselves or make it worse for themselves. Now that avenue seems to be taken away. I think he should have been able to at least go on there and explain what he meant and let people make a judgment instead of just completely cutting him off like that. And I think that's kind of what I'm talking about. And, and maybe I'm draw maybe I'm making a stretch here from what Olivia Munn did to this, but it's like this heckler's veto where if you don't like something, you just yell loud enough until they until they step back. You see this all the time, like in uh, you know, in, in college camp, you know, you hear about this in the news now. A college campus will have a conservative guy set to come speak and the outcry will be so loud that they'll cancel the speaking engagement because either they're afraid of riots or, I mean, you know, whatever. And so it's like people have realized that if you cause well, enough of a fuss, well, well, then you can stop things you don't want from happening. And is that really good for us in general? Again, now we've definitely sidestepped from the article here about Olivia Munn. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, like to give you more insight to the article and the quotes and everything, it's kind of like a good example of today is like the Serena, Serena Williams outburst. Yeah. And like, so for example, Olivia really feels like she's owed an apology or, you know, she goes, I was surprised that no one came out from the, my cast that asked me if I'm okay. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, about what? Like, what happened to you? Because nothing yeah. really directly happened to her. She just she was just like near that guy. Yeah, and I like that's one thing I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like people who see this and see that kind of behavior, they're not going to reward it. I think that's the underlying factor to this is they're not going to reward that kind of behavior because of 
this guy was a personal friend of Shane Black, who's been in the industry for you know forty years, thirty years, writing, directing. I mean, that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that he's like Harvey Weinstein; he has so much power he can do this kind of stuff. But the 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 quote from the article that's interesting is. The Fox spokesperson said, "We're not aware. We were not aware of his background during the casting process due to legal limitations that impede studios from running background checks on actors." Hmm. So, well, it's the same. It's that's the same for any business. That's why that disclosing it on the application or for whatever that's that's the same deal. They legally cannot say, "Hey, guy, have you, are you a registered sex offender?" Yeah. You you can't legally say, <laughs> but that. you can you can legally do a background check on stuff. Now I don't know the acting. Yeah, but background world. check really generally only. I think a background to, check will give you if they're on a list or not. I feel like that if they've been convicted of a. I don't even know if it says that. It's just something to do with credit most of the time. All right. Well, here's the deal. We don't know what we're talking about. I think to the fullest extent here, and we're here to talk about <laughs> movies. Uh, but the truth is, is that the stuff is it pervades movies. All this talk about, yeah. uh, you know, well, all the my, offenders, criminals. Well, my concern is it's going to become a publicity stunt. And it might be, you know, people are diabolical enough to use things like this for uh, the sake of yeah. the sake of publicity. But uh, let's let's roll well, like the Norm Macdonald thing. Like, yeah. You know how much publicity he got for his new show on Netflix? I didn't even know he was having a show on Netflix until I saw that he wasn't going to be on The Tonight Show. Seriously, you need to go on YouTube and just do like Norm Macdonald and just watch like 10 videos in a row because yeah, I, I love Norm. He's, <laughs> he's so funny. He's a certain kind of humor. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back from break, we're going to do the rewinds of the movies that we have seen over the last week. And in a little bit, we are going to be playing a game called General Admission, where we admit to the movies that we are a little bit ashamed. I like the title of that game. It's pretty creative. You like that? We played it on episode two. So uh, it was like the second thing we ever did on this show. Awesome. And it's been tabled ever since. But we're bringing it back, dusting it off. We'll be right back on The Ticket Stub. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. Have a legal question? Are you a resident of Montgomery County? Call 281-645-6344 to talk to a volunteer attorney from the Woodlands Bar Association. We answer the phones on the first Monday of every month at 281-645-6344 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to provide general legal information and information about legal resources to Montgomery County residents. The Ticket Stub is brought to you in part by Movie Tavern, with two locations serving the greater Houston area, 18359 Tomball Parkway, just north of Willowbrook Mall, and 9630 FM 1960 Bypass West, across from Deerbrook Mall. The Ticket Stub is sponsored by Movie Tavern. Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out ourlonestar.com slash sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776 with your questions. Get seen on TV, YouTube, and heard on our podcast FM and internet radio. Support your local radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Hey, Montgomery County and online listeners. Thank you so very much for checking out Jazzy Fives with Soul. What? You haven't done so yet? Well, you've got to tune in. Hi, I am the host of Jazzy Vice with Soul, Miss C.C. Holmes, and I invite you to check us out every Friday and Saturday from 7 until 9 p.m., where you will get the best in old school R&B, and of course, a little smooth jazz to make it jazzy. So tune in. That's right, tune in. Every Friday and Saturday right here on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLongStar.com. We're 
we're back on the ticket stuff. If you missed this first segment, we did movie news. Talking about Apple getting into the content game. Chance the Rapper starring in a movie called Slice. And Olivia Munn, who was isolated because of uh, oh, th- yeah. things that happened to her on the Predator set. And uh, Chris dropped us some knowledge about Olivia Munn that we won't mention here, but uh, interesting stuff. Uh, we're going to go into our rewinds now. This is where we talk about the movies that we've seen over the last week. And, uh, and we get to have an opportunity to really just talk movies. We're not going to be into the drama anymore like we were in the first segment. We're talking about hiring and firing and background checks, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. Chris, tell me you saw a movie this week. <laughs> did you watch Princess Mononucleosis? I did not. Okay. You because see? I need to go to Second and Charles and I need to buy it. Okay. I, to. I saw a movie called Daphne and Velma. Which like where do y'all do y'all have like from, a generator that pops these n- title like movies out for y'all to watch? No, I just uh, was uh, was on Hulu for free, and I had not watched anything, and it was like last night. Okay, so I was like, man, I got to find something from this week. But it's from 2018, which is this year, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it's okay. rated G. Oh, and it's an hour and twelve minutes. So I was like, is okay, this is a real movie. This is a real movie. It's uh, basically Daphne and Velma from Scooby Doo, uh, but it's like a prequel of Scooby Doo. And they go to a high school. And they got to investigate some strange goings on. Chris, in this their is high for like school. eight-year-old girls. I found that out. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I found out that it was. Well, did you Did you look at the poster? Oh, yeah. My... Okay. Well, it's got it's it, uh, uh, it stars Sarah Jeffrey and a girl named Sarah Gilman. Who, if you watch Last Man Standing, this is part of the reason why I chose it. Uh, if you watch Last Man Standing. Go, she's on go. there for a couple seasons as the annoying friend Cammy. Uh, so I liked her on that. So I, I figured I'd. Uh, I'd watch this. Now, usually I do like a rapid fire review from Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, of I, the like worst that. I always like that part. Yeah, there's no reviews. Okay. There's none. There's none. There's no critic reviews, and the audience score is 23%. So I don't have those. But I will say. Hey, Dick, I'm feeling kind of isolated working with Chris right now. I want you to know. <laughs> He's watching yeah. these rated G movies that are for like. Young yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Well, yeah. He, can, he can talk to uh, Apple. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Now, I will say this about the movie. It was eye meltingly bad. Okay. Um, did you make it through all hour and twelve minutes? I did. I can't believe you decided to do that. It was on my. I was on my phone for a good bit, but uh, yeah, it's. it's I can't believe you decided. Rough. Like I, that kind of stuff would be like off. Well, I was like <laughs> Scooby Doo. You know, okay, maybe it's cool because I like the other Scooby Doo movies, and this was produced by Ashley Tisdale. So I was like, <laughs> hey, maybe. That's the High School Musical girl for those for yeah. those that don't know Ashley Tisdale. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of like she's like a Disney Channel star, and her sister also produced it. So, but Chris, this is like I gotta look this up now. Now you got me on it. Yeah, you do some weird stuff, but this is one of the weird things. It does very much play like a Disney Channel movie because it was produced by Disney Channel people. I know that now. <laughs> and both Sarah Jeff- Jeffrey and Sarah Gilman previously worked for Disney. Yes, yes. Um, I this is are definitely. You, are you just a fan of Scooby Doo? Is that what it really comes down to? Because I can get that. No, I'm, I get like you want to consume all Scooby Doo. No, <laughs> I I rarely watch the cartoon show, but I did enjoy the Scooby Doo movies. So I figured, okay, well I'll check this out. It's it's uh it's really rough, but it's definitely for eight to ten year old girls. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I didn't know that going in. Uh, I think they would like it. I can't believe you watched this. <laughs> I can't believe it either. It's got a great production value. They get, the special effects are pretty good, but I don't know. The money did not go to the script. It went to the special <laughs> well, you're, effects. You're having, like, if I'm looking at the cast list, I would say about 70% to 80% are kids under the age of 16. That are the cast? So if you're doing the dialogue, yeah, you can't, you can't overcomplicate it. <laughs> I, there, there's no Rotten Tomato reviews, but here are some IMDb reviews. Okay, great. Here yes. we go. One out of 10. No way. This was, <laughs> this was not even close to the Velma and Daphne we so greatly love that in all the true. Scooby-Doo series. I agree with that, yes. Uh, it was so bad, blah, blah, blah. Six out of ten. I, for one, am open to anything Scooby-Doo related. This is Chris right here. Really? One out of ten. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Avoid this movie. <laughs> Two out of ten. Your children will like it less than you do. <laughs> one out of ten. Please, for the love of all that is unholy, stay away from this if you like Scooby-Doo. And that was just me reading the first four options right there. So, yes. Anyways. Anyway, I'm going to give it a thumbs down <laughs> unless you have an 8 to 10 year old girl. And then I'd say let her watch it because there's nothing bad in it. And it's, you know, decently family oriented. One out of 10. Bad writing, bad plot, bad effects make for a bad movie. One out of 10. Who asked for this? <laughs> that is true. Yes. No one did ask for no this. That did. is true. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good idea. I guess. Yeah. Well, if you're trying to spark a new yes. franchise, like let's look at Scooby Doo, but the younger years, that's like the so easiest So then you do one with to. Shaggy and Scooby Doo yeah. and. 
And then I high. guess Fred has a Fred has a standalone. You don't think, you movie. Don't think there's an origin story when they when Shaggy meets Scooby? How do they join the Mystery Incorporated or whatever? Yeah, yeah. there has to be a way. Aren't they in high school in the show though? Am I making that up? Like the original cartoon? I thought they were yes. like high school kids. They are, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and so they're they're high school. <laughs> yeah. So it's really it's a just Jeepers. a prequel like right before. Jeepers, man. Yeah. Yeah. Jinkies. Jeepers creepers. Jinkies. Jinkies. Jeepers. Jeepers creepers. Yes. How many? Yeah, creepers. How many times did they say jinkies in this? Uh, there was a couple of jinkies, not really a whole lot. Yeah. I really Jink- like the idea jink- jink- of you <laughs> going on Hulu <laughs> and be like, jink- man. Is that the Scooby Doo people? I'm watching it, and then after five minutes, well, that's you're where... like, I'm committing to it. <laughs> yeah, that's where it would be like. Well, because I, I was already tired of trying to make a choice, oh, and I was like, I gotta have something for tomorrow's show. This is happening, and I immediately regretted it. Maybe next week, watch like Manchester by the Sea, or you know, like kind of cleanse the palate with like an adult movie. <laughs> Really? I mean, that would be nice. I don't know. All right, Dick. Wait, did you watch a movie? Yes, I was did. It, was it age appropriate? Uh, I would say it was unique. It's on a Netflix produced bot movie, uh, The Package. And I don't know The Package. The Package is on Netflix. I would say it is New Age American Pie. Uh, it's a, when a group of teenage friends go on a spring break camping trip, and an unfortunate accident sets off a race against time to save their friend's most prized possession. Uh, that uh, that this, that this, accurately okay. sums up the the movie. I would say the funniest thing about it was, I did not know what it was about. Is it about a private part? So the so this movie is definitely for those who aren't squeamish, because does it get kind of bloody and like like it 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 gets like to me I like this kind of like crazy humor and it is crazy, and uh, oh man, just thinking about it, it's wild, man. Basically, they're fr- they're out camping with their friends, and one one guy's just tooling around with a switchblade and accidentally cuts off his uh, private part, what? and like full on cuts it off. And wow. then the, there's a mishap where the they can't find the private part, but they had to take him to the hospital. So the friends have to find the private part and get it out of the. the they're ten miles away from civilization, so there it's their journey to get to the hospital to give him his private part. This is the one that has the eggplant symbol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, and the tagline uh, is friendship is just the tip. Yeah, I mean, the, this is all so puns. That's what Speaking of it's all movies. puns. That's it's, it, like I said, it's American Pie, but the new age American Pie. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Okay. It's about teenagers. There's some great cameos in it, and it's some of it's so unbelievable that I like. I kind of hated some of the parts, but then uh, some of the parts. Which were, part? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, are, there, the, are the cameos of people you know? Because I'm looking at the cast, and these are not. Yeah, they're like they're B actors. Okay. So like Gary Jones, he's in a bunch of B B roles. Uh, Blake Anderson from Workaholics, that's a B roll. Oh yeah. Uh, and then there is the gas station attendant. Oh, I gotta find him, but uh, he he was an uh, interesting guy. And but again, it's one of those movies that it's totally unbelievable. You're just along for the ride, and it's something great to watch with friends. Because I was watching it with people, and I was like, I, I we stopped talking because it got that <laughs> ridiculous. Like, what's gonna happen next in this movie? And uh, so uh, that's if All you're right. if you're into that silly the stuff. The package on I'm Netflix. Gonna, I think I'm gonna watch that. If All you're right. into that silly stuff, you'll probably not exactly what I meant, Chris, when I was talking about. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what's really important about telling people to watch this movie if they want to, it's like you got to be able to handle like it's, dirty humor. It's TVMA. And oh, definitely. They, they live and into that. Like, I mean, they 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 are not afraid to show a cutoff part, a uh, private part throughout the whole movie. So let that be your guide. Because it's part of the joke. Like all their gags revolve around this case with the with the ice and you know like Gosh. that's the whole joke. All right, that sounds good. Well, I saw I'm gonna do kind of one and a half rewinds here. One super fast. I saw Crazy Rich Asians finally this week. I've uh, been wanting to see it. Uh, you know, it, it's adapted from a Kevin Kwan book, which is also called Crazy Rich Asians, uh, starring uh, Constance Wu, who uh, has been in some stuff. Aquafina, who was in Ocean's Eight. Uh, she was one of the, the yes. she was like the Asian girl in, in Ocean's 8. Yep. Uh, so basically this was Big Fat Greek Wedding, but for like rich Asian people, it was like, oh, I don't fit in with the family because they have all these customs and things that I don't, it was that, it was that, you know, this movie got so much hype, Crazy Rich Asians did. I thought it was going to be like, um, it was just a romantic comedy. I mean, it was like the most basic romantic comedy you could ever imagine. They're in love. Family doesn't approve. Well, it got propped up because of the angle of, oh, it's like an all-Asian cast. Which is fine. Like, I thought it was kind of cool to see him. You know, normally if you go to a movie, even if it's like kind of a more like 
Asian movie. And I don't know if that's like weird to say that or not, but like, it still is like white people everywhere. And there's just like an Asian main character maybe or something. This was like everybody, you know, every single person. Is that weird you out or something? No, I'm saying it's not really an, it's not really an Asian movie. If like just the main character is, and then everybody is it kind of like 47 Ronin. Like Keanu Reeves is yeah. The, yeah, like the main character. Where everyone's like, Asian but him. Yeah, exactly. And it still somehow is about him. Yeah, and he's the main character. And the so, great in the wall, the great wall with Matt Damon. Oh, yeah. yeah, why, yeah. That was the worst movie ever. But uh, I love that that's movie, That's what we should dude. do for group. That, that's so terrible. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but this was cool. It was cool to see. And it, it was a lot about their culture, which I thought was really interesting and, and cool to see. But the movie was like so, oh, like whatever. You know, like it was totally like, eh. I mean, it was fine. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. Well, it was based off a book. Yeah, and I heard the book is really good, but the movie, like, it's, you know, 90, and it's such, like, a 2018 thing. It's, like, 98% or 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I'm telling you, it's because it was yeah, popped up like that. But I really thought that it had, like— because it's an all-Asian cast. I really let myself believe that it had, like, a really good plot because it was so well— It was like, oh, this is groundbreaking. You know, this is so amazing. Some of the, you know, some of the movies like that that have the, the, the ethnicity going into it— uh, Straight Out Compton, for well, instance, which was one from a couple years ago. I love that. That was a really, really good movie, and it had this cultural element tied into it. This was just a like a lame rom com plot with the cultural element, and then it's being lifted up as this awesome movie. So it, it's fine. I, it's whatever. I, the thing, the way I look at it is, rom coms are so easily seen as bad movies, and it's really rare for a rom com yeah. to be normal it's to be they, like average oh wait till you get to our top three <laughs> embarrassing list <here. laughs> it's wow. just because they hit the tr- it's like they're all like plot line a plot line b yeah plot line c oh well you we like all, that you like that love. ryan 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 Reynolds, ryan reynolds movie uh definitely made no Dude, that's definitely, a good movie though yeah, definitely yeah, like, that's a good movie see, oh. <laughs> see i'm saying like it's it, it's weird to look at a rom-com and judge it because it's like it's either really bad or it's average my point was i never seen one that's been like maybe sleep in seattle is like one of those 98 percent that yeah. deserves the 98 percent because it was kind of different at the time my point was this is fine but judge it on the same level you judge all the other rom-coms don't make me believe that this is some really great movie uh, I, I'm not, the, the ethnic stuff was cool, you know, or the the. That's because you have white privilege. I do. It's showing right now. Of course. I will say this from a theater operator standpoint, uh, it's nice to have a hit this time of year because yeah. this is a very slow time of year, and this was a nice surprise, kind of like the Blind Side was back in the day in the off season. That movie was a huge hit. This is right along those lines, so it's nice for us. Well, cool, Crazy Rich Asians. If you like a rom com, you'll like it. It's like a sweet story. You know, I'm just heartless and don't really care about that kind of stuff that much. Uh, Def- the, but definitely, maybe is like, oh, but definitely, maybe speaks to my heart. <laughs> the why, other, one, why wasn't that cast diverse enough? It was that was white. That was a very, very, very white. They didn't even have like a black friend. I don't think. I think it was just like well, what's, everybody what's, was white. What's funny when I saw this movie come out, Crazy Rich Asians, it made me think of. There's a huge movie market in in Asia, and basically they've been known to take plots from movies and then make it a, an Asian type movie. And so I made maybe think. Do you think they're going to crazy white? They're going to do something. <laughs> no, like they're they're going to take the same plot and like do it in India. Or something Crazy like that. Crazy Rich Indians? Yes. Who knows? Maybe so. No, because like some of them are directly copies oh, of really? movies. Like, like, uh, for some reason, you know the Jennifer Lopez movie with Richard Greer, like Save the Last Dance or yeah. something? They remade that in China. But with just, just with Chinese exactly. people. Oh, that has a great ending. So I don't really know. It does. It's not on my list. But, right, well, but see, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, there's a market for it. I'm yeah. like, man, I can't, I can't <laughs> yeah. believe they just copied this B movie into another B movie. Well, it's probably but, cheap. It's already developed. But I want to talk about one other movie quickly, uh, and that is the movie Searching, which is also in theaters now, or maybe kind of on its way out of theaters. Uh, written and directed. Uh, speaking, I mean, this is another movie that prominently featured Asians as the stars, and I think the I don't know the writer is named Anish Shaganti, and I don't know what ethnicity that person is. But it's starring John Cho, who I really like. I like John Cho a lot, and uh, it's got Deborah Messing, who it took me like halfway into the movie for me to realize it was De- like about a third into the movie. I was like, is that is that Deborah Messing? Uh, yeah, she changed. Yeah, and then about and then about halfway through, I was finally like. Yeah, no, that for sure is Deborah Messing. I don't know if it was her hair or something, but then it's got a girl named Michelle La, who was the daughter of John Cho. The, the, the plot is after a 16-year-old daughter goes missing, a desperate father breaks into her laptop to look for clues to find her. And what I'll say, I usually don't like found footage at all, and I didn't know that this was found footage walking into it. It is the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. Oh, wow. But, but it's – well, I say found footage. That may not even be the right word. Everything you're watching is – video capture from some sort of electronic device so sometimes it's tv news reporting that you're like it brings you into the newscast sometimes it's on someone's cell phone it's a lot of facetiming 
a lot of times it's the it's the laptop it's the screenshot of the laptop and you see the mouse going around like clicking on stuff and looking in files and things like that it's probably because the script wasn't that strong it might be because so i think it like, i think it definitely hey. i think it definitely hides the script like because it's like it'll be like 30 seconds of just the mouse like moving to file folders and stuff to click don't click there yeah but i'll tell you norm idiot. normally found footage i i really hate uh, but this was actually uh this was not as bad it was convenient at times for sure like what you're saying they they relied on it a little bit heavily at, at a couple of different times uh but this is really a pretty solid suspense movie uh, with with a little bit of a twist there, and uh, of the things that are in theaters right now, there's not a whole lot of just like really really awesome things in the theaters right now. But this would be one that would be worth your time to go to. It's not scary, so like if you don't, if you don't like scary movies or if that's your thing, go to the Nun instead. But this is one that like if you like kind of suspense, you like a plot that moves a little bit. The acting was not like a one. John Cho I think did really good, but the rest of the people not as good. There was a lot of like you know. Just, I don't know, Deborah Messing was distracting to me, her acting, and just because I couldn't figure out if that was her or not. Uh, but then they had the opening scene. I do want to mention the opening scene. Very effective. It was, uh, this isn't spoiling anything, but the mom is not alive in the present day of the movie. Mm -hmm. And the opening scene is using the computer to tell the story of how she like got sick and then eventually died. And it's so sad because it's like showing, it's like every, every first day of school for the daughter, you know, and then it's like first day of ninth grade. And the mom's like in a wheelchair, you know, and then it's like first grade, first day of 10th grade and the mom's not there, you know, and it's showing like hospital visits and stuff. And you're, I mean, again, Hilarious. Like, yeah, <laughs> again, I'm not, I'm not real, uh, I'm not real like emotional and sensitive or anything like that. But man, I was like, oh, like it, it, it's effective. I'll say that very effective searching, check it out in theaters. Pretty cool movie. Why do you get to do two movies? Like, uh, I don't know because I just chose to. Okay. Because I really wanted, I, I wanted to talk about searching, but crazy rich Asians, I I don't know. I just feel like I should talk about both. Because you're trying to capitalize on the uh, current social price of talking about crazy. <laughs> I love when we can hear the yeah of, of your microphone. Uh, yes, I'm trying to capitalize on the the Asian film going on right now. Well, with that being said, let's go to break. What do you think? Huh? Yeah. Break it up. When we come back, we're going to talk about general admission. We're going to play the game where we admit the movies that we are ashamed to say that we like. Let's begin. The Ticket Stub is brought to you in part by Movie Tavern, with two locations serving the greater Houston area, 18359 Tomball Parkway, just north of Willowbrook Mall, and 9630 FM 1960 Bypass West, across from Deerbrook Mall. The Ticket Stub is sponsored by Movie Tavern. Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. Is there someone you know who is hooked on vintage aircraft? Follow the commemorative Air Force and its fleet of World War II planes, including the mighty B-17 Flying Fortress Texas Raiders, which is based in Conroe, Texas. Texas Raiders tours locally and all around the United States, offering the public a chance to put their hands on aviation history. What could be a more perfect gift than a flight on a historic B-17? Taking to the sky on the iconic bomber is an experience that will never be forgotten. For the touring schedule, reservations, or more information, go to b17texasraiders.org or call 855-FLY-A-B-17. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at irlonestar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, Check out the Ticket Stub podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. We're back on the Ticket Stub, everybody. If you missed the first two segments, we did movie news. We also did a rewind of the movies we've seen over the last week, including Crazy Rich Asians, Searching, uh, 
The Package, available on Netflix, and then Velma and Daphne. Daphne and Velma. <laughs> Excuse me, Daphne and yeah, Velma. You gotta get it right. Which is on Hulu. Uh, luckily, you didn't pay for that one. We do want to remind everybody that we come live every Thursday at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 in the Conroe area and uh, worldwide, IRLoneStar.com, podcast, Facebook, video. Shout out to Chad Miller and uh, and, and who's our other buddy who's, who's listening? We got Brandon Dunhoe and Dil- also uh, Dylan Richter. I Dylan Richter, know. yeah. Chad and Dylan are friends from the last week's show and, and Chad's episode where we interviewed him about Last Man Standing. It's available on uh, YouTube, Facebook, podcast, all that stuff. And so if you missed that, be sure to go check that out and give it a listen. Uh, Chad's a good guy. Very, very nice to be on the show with us. Speaking of that, we, we had a grand ticket giveaway for this week. The question was guessing the age difference between some last man standing replacements on the new season. The winner of that was Wes Smith. Chris made him do a little research to prove yeah, it was show like his a, work. He had, he, sh- he had to cite his sources. <laughs> yeah, and he did. So, yeah. uh, so Wes, congrats on winning those tickets. And at the end of the show, we'll announce the way that you can win two tickets for next week to the movie tavern and grand theater. You don't have to be in Conroe anywhere that there's a grand theater or movie tavern. These tickets are good, and we give two away every week right here on the show. Uh, so congrats, Wes, and uh, good luck to all future uh, all future entries. We're going to move into our game, General Admission. We let time get away from us in our silliness earlier today, so we need to do this kind of fast. Uh, general Admission, we're going to go 3-1, three 3-2, to one, three, two, and then 1 in order of the ones that we are least embarrassed of to most embarrassed. And uh, Chris, just because you're sitting across from me, we'll start with you, and uh, we'll, we'll go around the circle. So what's your number three? Uh, my number three is What Dreams May Come from 1998, the Robin Williams movie. I've talked about this on... Uh, the show of several times. Uh, the reason it's embarrassing to me is because I cry through this entire movie. It does not matter when I, if I'm just flipping through the channels and it's on, I will uh, get teared up. And the embarrassing part is that if someone else is like in the other room and then they walk in and I'm in there crying because I'm watching this movie, it's just embarrassing because it's so, it's so emotional for me. So this one's embarrassing, not because of the plot, but more because of your reaction. My to reactions it. to it. Because it gets you, it makes you, and that's about, the, and his, his wife, he, he's looking for his wife in the afterlife or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. His, their kids are killed. He's killed. Then his wife commits suicide. So he's trying to <laughs> find her. Yes. It's, it's, it's very depressing. Yeah, but the ending. It's a little lighthearted watch. The ending is, it, there's such a great payoff. Okay. I'm, I'm, sounds really great. Yeah. <laughs> what dreams may come. All right, Dick, what about you? I would say Star Wars episode one. Oh, you like it? I like oh. it. But you're a little bit embarrassed. Yeah. Actually, I like all three. The, the <laughs> is that your three, two, and one? Is oh. Well, it's too easy to say yeah. that. But I like. I do. I enjoyed it. You I like episode it. one? I do. I like Qui Gon. I like the character. You like the pod racing. I like you the, like the boy. I like, I like the. You like, I like Jar Jar? the pod racing. What? If you watch that in a theater, it's one of the best scenes you can see in a theater. Oh my goodness! But, no, What's, trust me. Like if you, I saw it in theaters, like I saw that movie two yeah, times I in saw theaters. It, yeah. But I mean, what about Jar Jar? You don't like the. I mean, it was cool. Was the best scene you could ever see like in a theater? If you're displaying a, if you're if you're gonna be showing off a, th- a home theater system, that's the scene you want to show. No, dude, you gotta get like drone footage of the mountains or something like that. That's what they always do at like Sam's Club when you're looking at the televisions. Yeah, you know? I'm talking about the, the home theater system, the whole like the sound, oh, the sound, sound editing. But that, that was back that when they had like THX, yeah. George Lucas's deal. So no, I like, I do, I, I enjoy it. I What's think the kid's name? Anakin? No, I mean like the real kid, Jake. Jake Lloyd? something. No, not Jake Lloyd. <laughs> Is it, it Jake Lloyd? I have no it was idea. Jake something, and he was like universally hated after this I think movie. It's Jake Lloyd. Well, I mean, like, do you I, like Jar Jar? Uh, I mean, that's not like saying it's like my favorite movie. I will say there's yeah, some yeah, stupid, for sure, for there's sure. some stupid parts, we, but I mean, I think as as a movie, I enjoyed it. I really liked pretty much everything. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna turn this crap off kind of thing. A lot of people like hate those movies. Yeah, I do not hate those movies. I, I, I guess I like them. I guess is that qualified? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not your favorite movie. We yeah. literally asked him if he likes Jar Jar like four or five times, and he's just <laughs> ignored the question. No, I do not like Jar Jar. Okay, okay, there we go. There go. All right, well, we can, we can be a little bit redeemed. Uh, that was, no, these are not your favorite movies. These are movies that you're a little bit embarrassed to admit that you like. Yeah. Uh, so for me, number three, a, uh, speaking of rom-coms, after I just went on a long t- tirade about how I don't like r- rom-coms, I think I've talked about this one on the show before, uh, but it is from 2001. It is a movie called Serendipity with Kate Beckinsale and John Cusack. Mm. I remember vividly being a teenager, uh, sitting on the couch with my dad as we were flipping through the channels. We stumbled across this movie, oh, wow. and we were locked in for the next two hours as we mm. watched the entire thing. And uh, there's some scenes where they fall in love, or, or they, they, they realize they like each other, and then fate causes them to separate. And there's like three different times where it's a near miss, where one walks in the door while the other one walks out. And you're like, oh, come on. And will they or won't they? The whole whole plot of the movie, uh, yeah, it is a really. I feel like it's stupid. I, you know, it's it's not really that good, but for some reason, I've always really liked Serendipity. All right, Chris, number two. 
Number two is The Proposal from 2009. Oh, Ra- Ryan no. Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock. I love this movie. I, I think it's great. Uh, I'm embarrassed that I like it, but it's got my man Craig T. Nelson, second favorite actor. He's in it. That's why I. <laughs> that's why I originally watched it, but I ended up liking the whole thing. Betty White's in it. So the proposal. Yeah, yeah. The proposal. Th- I didn't love that one, so I admit, I see why you're embarrassed about that one. Yeah. yeah. Dick, you got two. Yeah, I would say Dumber and Dumber er. Really, you like? I did. That? I oh. really had a good time in the theater watching that. There was a couple. The dialogue to me was really funny. Maybe not the same level as the original Dumb and Dumber. But I thought the acting was all, all like for what they were trying to do. I enjoyed. It. I walked out of that f- movie like laughing. Now so. this is the one that was directly after the first movie, right? With the yeah, two not, young guys. Yeah, the yeah. two young guys yeah, yeah. when Harry met Lloyd. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, but that one like, was let down, I, let down for me. I yeah. I mean like I, like I said again, I just liked it when yeah. I when I left yeah. the movie. That's the whole point. I was like, man, I really enjoyed some of the lines in that movie were ridiculous, and it, the it was really clever. In the writing, because you could tell that was Harry and that was Lloyd, and like little things. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. Right. Well, the whole know. point of this is, you know, to each his own. Number two for me, general admission, uh, the movie Cloud Atlas. Uh, really? Yeah. Do you like that or not like that? I I thought it was okay, but it wasn't like. I, I feel like it's good. Well, that's exactly because I, re- I reviewed it on here. Yeah. I, well, so num- one of the one of the problems is it's almost three hours long. Uh, which is why a lot of people are very critical of it. One of the problems is because it's like so all over the place. Uh, but for whatever reason, I don't know. I thought it was kind of. I thought it was cool. They had like several storylines where it was like kind of the same people, but in different timelines, in different almost universes. And I just thought it was interesting. I thought it was kind of cool. It got a lot of negative feedback after it came out. A lot of people saying like it was trying too hard to be something. I feel like it shouldn't have been Tom Hanks. Should, Pro- probably should have not. been somebody else. Probably somebody less less Tom. I don't know, younger or less iconic or something. I don't know. But it was interesting. And uh, there was one world where instead of, it was Tom Hanks and Halle Berry in almost every universe, but like one of them was two like Korean people instead. I just thought it was interesting, you know. But they were always the same person, like mm-hmm. personality or spirit or whatever you want to say. Interesting stuff. All right, Chris, number one. Number one for me is uh, the most embarrassing thing is First Daughter uh, <laughs> from 2004. What, uh, uh, with what? starring Katie Holmes yes. and, and Michael Keaton, oh, where Katie Holmes is the daughter of Michael Keaton, who's the president. She has to go to college. She falls in love with the college boy there, but he's actually a Secret Service agent oh. who's there to protect her. But she doesn't know, and then that's the twist plot. She finds out, and then she's like, oh, how dare you, man. <laughs> and then they actually fall in love. Katie, oh. Katie, it's okay. It's yeah. amazing. Wait, so you're telling me at the end they have a scene where they almost break up, but then at the end they decide that their love is too important and they stay together? Believe it or not. Wow, that is a revolution in film telling and storytelling. Yeah. All right, Dick, number one. I would say the Matrix sequels. Okay. I like those movies. Yeah, I liked them okay. Number two was better than number three. I feel like they were kind of declining slowly over time for me. Well, I think it's also, you, you, you it's weird to me is the first one has so groundbreaking in the storytelling, and I think what happened was, and I give props to the creators of the Matrix. The, uh, the Wachowski siblings yeah those like they they kept going for it yeah yeah it wasn't like oh hey let's kind of keep the same thing from the first one and kind of put them in like no they kept going with different ideas and that was definitely one of the movies that i left kept thinking about it i was like that's really cool that was cool that they did this and you know programs can revolt you know all that kind of stuff and um i think it was well done and i i like i think some of the scenes are very iconic and especially in filmmaking like the scene with the twins yeah, and the the highway scene that was a cool original yeah. highway. I need scene. to rewatch those. Uh, that was a cool yeah. scene. Um, well, for me, I'll say my number one. We're running out of time here, uh, and I truly am embarrassed to say this, and I kind of hate myself for not be definitely maybe, liking it. I wanna... No, it's the Princess Diaries with uh, Anne Hathaway. Um, okay, I hate Anne Hathaway as a general rule. I don't like her in anything. This is the first. I heard thing... she's dating Josh Gad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first thing I ever saw her in. And uh, I li- at that point, I liked her, and then I thought, oh, I like that actress. And then in everything else I saw her since then, I slowly realized that I actually hate her. Uh, this is a movie that I have not seen in a while, uh, but it's one that I did see, and I really liked when it came out and when it was kind of you know popular or whatever. Embarrassed to say it because, honestly, I feel like it's probably super stupid. And, uh, you know, it's probably— uh, Not as stupid as liking Star Wars. Exactly. Well, yeah. only idiots like Star Wars Episode One, But this <laughs> one, I- I'm truly embarrassed to say that I like it. Mostly, I think, I think a lot of that's fueled because of my hatred for Anne Hathaway— and I'm embarrassed that I like something that she was in, if that makes sense. Uh, it runs pretty deep. Yeah, but you also have the Sound of Music Lady in that one. So was, Yeah, Julie Andrews yeah. in it, too. So she she classes it up, definitely. Plus, that's that's when Anne Hathaway was, a, like, I, when I say child, I mean, like, she was a young actress. She wasn't the new actress that she is now. 
Yeah, it, she wasn't as a. Yeah, I feel like the pretentious level was. It's kind of like what's her name from? Uh, I just what's her name? You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, what's her, uh, yeah, yeah, what's her name? That chick from that thing. The girl from uh, Grey's Anatomy, who has I forget, and she's in a couple movies. She was like 27 Dresses, like this kind of. Oh, movies. oh, Heigl. Yeah. yeah, like she had a young career that she was bearable, and then all of a sudden it went like. From, I think it's because she was a bia. Yeah, Jason Parker just said that you should be ashamed of Princess Diaries. <laughs> I, sh- I, I am. That's, I, I, I am ashamed. I'm telling you. It's, I'm admitting it that I'm embarrassed to like it. But uh, Chasen, you like Jar Jar Binks. Ch- forgive, me, forgive me, Jason, for I know not what I do. Uh, all right. Well, we got to we got to wrap this whole thing up. Uh, we do want to say that uh, the question for next week's grand ticket giveaway is in honor of the movie White Boy Rick that's coming out. I think it's this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there was an, so what event in Cleveland caused filming to be suspended two different occasions during the last few weeks of the filming. So something happened a couple different times while they were filming at the end of production that caused them to have to take breaks e- each different time. And uh, so if you'll answer that, tweet at us at the <laughs> underscore ticket stub. Was it the filming of the Drew Carey show opening out in the way? <laughs> That's, so <laughs> stupid. That's so stupid. The Drew Carey show. Yeah, but well, he was he's yeah, in Cleveland. Cleveland, Rocks, yeah, yeah, Cleveland yeah, 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 whatever, you know. All right, well, if you want to answer that question on the t- on Twitter or you can send us a message on Facebook, you have an opportunity to win two tickets to the Grand Theater or Movie Tavern. We are sponsored by Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. Be sure to tune in uh, for the next next week. We'll have more games, more movie news. Later on in the month, on September 27th, Chase and Parker's coming back in a studio to ridicule me for liking The Princess Diaries. Also to join us for the group rewind of Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Uh, for Chris, for Dick, my name is Connor, signing off on the Ticket Stub.